We can see it in the distance, the town of Bethlehem. A journey near completion, and yet not at its end. For to see a new way of living and being, a truth that can set us free. Christ calls us from the manger, Christ calls us from the cross. Christ is there in our celebrations, Christ is there in our every loss. For God set a tent among us, new happiness and strife. The gift of joy is embracing the full tapestry. Welcome everyone to First Parish. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ where all are welcome. Diversity is treasured and you are welcome here no matter where you are on life's journey. On this third Sunday in Advent, a special greeting to all of you who may be worshiping with us for the first time. We hope you'll introduce yourself to us following the service and join us for coffee and fellowship. We'd also like to welcome those who are worshiping with us through the online streaming, which we give thanks to the media team who are making that possible today and every week. We appreciate that so much. We'd like to invite you to sign the pew pad that you'll find at the end of your pew. We'd like to know that you were here today. Please sign it and pass it on down the line. And we have um, some important announcements to begin. Sue?
Good morning. My name is Sunu Meyer, and I wanted to let you know that the 2018 Gingerbread Fair was lots of fun and $8,487.29 was deposited into the bank. Everyone always wonders, where does this money go? Please read the article in the January Messenger, which details the many projects that this event supports. I think you'll be surprised how far reaching this extends in our church community as well as the greater Saco Bitterford Old Orchard community. Also, think about becoming involved next year. We need lots of help to continue with this treasured community event. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Robert Guptel. I'm here with two messages from the mission team. The first is to bring your attention to the insert in your bulletin about the Christmas fund. I won't talk about it, but I encourage you to read that and give generously next Sunday. The second message, uh, a group from this church is interested in preparing a meal for some veterans in transition at the Hewitt House. If you'd like to help with a side dish or learn more about it, please see Nancy Toomey at a table out in the fellowship hall after worship, and we'll have more info for you in the coming weeks. Thanks. Good morning. I'm Dale Selinski. I'm chair of the Pastoral Search Team 2.0. To keep you up to date, the search team has introduced the concept of engaging the congregation with visioning questions in order to ensure you remain part of the search process and have buy-in. So again today, and for one more week, we'll be posing questions and are interested in your feedback. First week's question was, what drew you to First Parish and what keeps you coming back? Last week's question was, where do you see the spirit of God moving at First Parish? This week's question is a two-parter, and it's, what are your hopes and dreams for First Parish, and what does a partnership with a new pastor look like? So to get your feedback, we have a, have a table set up out in the atrium after worship. Please stop by and chat. If you prefer to grab one of the slips of paper and fill it out, uh, we certainly welcome that. If you have previous slips from previous weeks, uh, we certainly welcome those. You can turn those in at any time. Your responses are especially helpful once we start interfacing with potential candidates. So regardless, we'd love to hear what's on your mind. Please continue to pray for us. And again, thanks for the trust that you have placed in us. Thank you so much. Let us take a few moments now center our hearts and take advantage of this sacred moment right here, right now. This is the heart of God in this place and we give thanks.
Will all who are able please stand and join in our responsive call to worship. We are walking toward a silent night, drawn by the cords of love. We are moving to the sound of an angelic choir, lured by a deep and holy melody. We are growing in the likeness of Christ, supported by the nudges of the Spirit. We are living in awareness of a divine love that fills the universe, pulling us to love and serve, to pray and worship. Let us pray together. God of Mary and Joseph, God of shepherd and sage, God of Jesus our Lord, still our anxious worry about lists and events. Hush the frantic tone in our voices. Slow the rush of our busy feet. Open us to the joy hidden in every carol the love tucked into every card, the beauty nourished in every evergreen. With Mary, let us wonder, fill our hearts, and blessings be our song. With Joseph, let us listen to the whispers of the night and do what is right. With shepherds and kings, let us prepare to hear the flutter of angel wings. See the bright star and kneel in awe and joy. With Jesus, let us show your light to the world. God of the morning light and holy nights, we long for you. Amen.
On this third Sunday in Advent, we light the candles of hope and peace again. We remember our longing for God to be with us and to give us peace. Today, we light a third candle and name it Joy. This candle reminds us that God wants us to rejoice even when it feels hard to do. This candle is a symbol of the joy that comes when God is with us.
Long ago, in the town of Nazareth in Galilee, lived a young woman. Her name was Mary. One day, as Mary was busy br baking bread, a shining figure suddenly appeared before her. It was the angel Gabriel, who had come to deliver a special message from God. Don't be afraid, Mary. God has chosen you to be a mother of a baby, a son, and you will call him Jesus. How can that be? I have no husband. Your child will be a holy child. He will be called the Son of God. Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. When Mary told him what the angel Gabriel had told her, 
Joseph was troubled and confused. He didn't know what to do. That night, in a dream, the angel spoke to Joseph. Joseph, take Mary for your wife, for the Holy Spirit is the father of her child. Don't be afraid. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. <laughs> this baby will show people how God wants him to live. You must care for him. And Joseph did what the angel told him to do. the same time Mary's baby was due to be born, Emperor Augustus sent out a decree that everyone must return to the place he was born in order to be counted. And so Mary and Joseph packed up all their belongings and set off for the city of Bethlehem. It was a long and difficult journey.
When Mary and Joseph finally arrived in Bethlehem, they were cold and tired. The city was crowded with people. All Mary and Joseph wanted was a safe place to stay for the night, but at every inn, they were turned away. Sorry, no room. We have no room. Finally, the kind innkeeper took pity on them. Please, don't you have any room? My wife is tired and we've been traveling for days. Well, we do have a stable up back. You'll be warm and safe there. Later that night, in the snug little stable, Mary's baby was born. She called him Jesus, the name the angel Gabriel had given her. She wrapped her little baby in a warm blanket and laid him in a manger filled with soft hay. Meanwhile, on a nearby hillside, some shepherds tending to their flock of sheep had gathered together to tell stories through the night. Suddenly, a brilliant light filled the sky. An angel appeared before the faithful shepherds. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Do not be afraid, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts singing and praising God. to all.
must go to Bethlehem at once to see the baby king and worship him. But what shall we bring the Christ child? You have nothing to give. Let us bring this lamb as a gift. The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem as fast as they could. There, in the stable, they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. The shepherds knelt quietly by the manger, careful not to wake the sleeping baby. Filled with love, they presented the lamb to Jesus before returning to their sheep in the hills. We must tell everyone the news. God has kept the promise. The waiting is over and our Savior is born. A bright star appeared the night Jesus was born. Some wise men from a faraway land saw it. They knew it was a special star, a sign that the Messiah had been born. So, and so they followed it.
born a king on Bethlehem's plain. Gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, prayer and praising voices raising, worshiping God on high. Its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone cold tomb. Wise men traveled many days, guided by the great star. Once the star reached Bethlehem, it glowed stronger and brighter than before. Finally, it came to a rest over the stable where Jesus lay. Where is the special baby, born to be king of the Jews? He is here, lying in a manger. We have seen his star in the east. We have come to worship him. The wise men bowed down and worshipped the holy child, presenting precious gifts of gold, sweet-smelling frankincense, and healing myrrh. So they came, and so we come today, to bow down before the Prince of Peace, the hope of all people, and the Savior of our world.
as we continue in our service with joy and celebration and deep, deep thanksgiving. We are so blessed to be here today. I would invite you to share the names of those who you'd like to lift in prayer this day. Perhaps someone who you know who is in need of healing or strength or courage or someone who is celebrating a joy or a celebration. Simply raise your hand and one of the deacons will come and bring you the microphone. Raise your hand. Ra raise it up so that the deacons can see. Yeah, like, yes, sir. I'd like people to pray for my nephew. He just quit drinking. And he's been 49 days now. And Thank I you. just would like people's prayers for that. Continuing prayers for him. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Adria? Uh, prayers for of joy and celebration for my friends Megan and David, who just announced they're having their second child. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, Lou. Prayers of thanksgiving for Eric to bring me here. It's been over a year since I've been here, and it's wonderful to see everybody. And on a more personal note, prayers for my sister Nancy, who's down in North Carolina. She's getting out of a psych hospital tomorrow, and they are coming home for Christmas. So thanks for that. Thank you, Lou. Good to have you here today. Yes, Linda. I haven't had a chance to offer a prayer for a long time because I'm teaching in Sunday school, which is a great joy, by the way, if anyone ever wants to try it. Um, <laughs> Four-year-olds are fun. So I have a couple of prayers, and one of them is my friend Annabelle. And Annabelle, at 88, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. And she will have surgery and have to go through radiation. So it's kind of 88, you think, uh-uh, it's not going to happen, but it did. And my grandson, Dylan Preventure, has graduated from basic. He is in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and he will be deployed deployed to Iraq in January for nine months. So prayers for his safety, safety of all our soldiers who are in harm's way. Godspeed to them all. And for their families at home, and we will pray without ceasing. Thank you. Yes, Jane. Good morning. Um, I would like to say that I, we have been asking for prayers for Tom Bull. Um, for that he would receive a heart transplant and I'm really happy to say that um, he received a heart transplant on Thanksgiving and he's doing great so um, just continued player, prayers please thank you for that good word Jane thank you okay just, yes hi Vicki to uh, give prayers of thanksgiving. My brother does not have colon cancer. Oh, and great. thanks for the prayers and the beautiful prayer saw that you guys made him. Continue prayers for thanksgiving. Thank goodness. Yes. Yes. Um, prayers of thanks to you, God, just for this lovely evening that we had and letting me be part of the pageant, even though I'm a bit too old for it. <laughs> you were a stunning, you were a stunning king. You were never too old. And pray such as thanks to him for letting this all go smoothly, even if there were some parts where we all did laugh at when we slightly messed up. But it's nothing because nothing's perfect, but it can still be enjoyable. Absolutely, absolutely. We just, our hearts are all so full. Thank you. Yes, Dale. Yeah, continued prayers for uh, Lynn's brother, Rob, who uh, heads to Mass General tomorrow. Prayers for Rob. I think I saw someone. Yes, in the balcony. My mistake. <laughs> Just stretch. We have some others. We'll give you a chance to get over to the center there. Thank you. Anyone else down here? Dan. 
Yes, I, we're blessed and pleased this morning to have a daughter, Jennifer, and granddaughter, Abigail, visiting with us from North Carolina, and they'll be here through the holidays to be joined later on by the husband, Steve. Lovely. Welcome, and we're so glad you're here today. Blessings. Yes. A prayer for us all sharing love together and a prayer for myself that tomorrow when I job shadow, it will be fruitful and turn into a job for me. Indeed. Thank you. Blessings and, and goodwill for you. Thank you. Anyone from the streaming community? No, no. nothing. Okay, thank you. Our hearts continue to overflow and just be so blessed in this moment let us continue now with some silent prayer Holy and precious God, we lift all of these names that have been spoken to your care this day. You know the needs of each one for courage, for healing, for thanksgiving, for strength. We also add these names to our prayers today for Lou Downey and Donna Goulding, for Sandy Shaw. Joe Nancy Gunn and Sandy Winship. We also pray for Bob Jones' wife, Nancy, whose mother passed away a few days ago. And also for so many whose names are in our hearts, on the tips of our tongues, and those for whom we pray continually. Holy center of this most holy season, Jesus, child and ruler, all our stars point to your birth. All our wanderings come home to you. All our griefs and delights find a place in the stable where you chose to transform poverty and pain and loneliness and rejection. Your light shines in our lives. Your peace embraces our anger, sorrow, and loss. Your life opens us to new discovery of our most intimate selves and of our neighbors, however we may find them, poor as shepherds, as foreign as magi, as thoughtless as innkeepers, as helpless as infants. In your humble birth, we discover your everlasting majesty and grace. As we continue week by week, day by day, we welcome you and offer you our thanks and praise in your glorious name. Amen.
as we continue in our service and give thanks to receive the continuing gift of music ministry. We would also let you know that this is a time when we may receive your gifts. Our morning offering will now be received. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother. Let us pray together. Thank you, God of love, for the promise of this season. We are grateful for the generosity aroused in us by Christ's coming into the world. May these gifts represent a new spirit of joyous sharing among us for the sake of all your children everywhere. Amen.
beloved of God, we have felt the presence of the Christ child here with us today. Let us, let us be empowered to go forth with kindness, with gentleness, with peace in our hearts. Know that you go with the blessing of the one God who is creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Go now in peace. Amen. <laughs>